Hey there, Megan. Uh, here's chapter 16. Don't mind if my phone all of a sudden tips over. It's just balancing on the charger because you know from the last chapter that I read, my phone was starting to die. So let's try another one. This is chapter 16. As Stanley entered the rec room, he could hear X-Ray's voice from all the way across the room. See what I'm saying, X-Ray said. Am I right or am I right? The other bodies in the room were a little more than bags of flesh and bones dumped across broken chairs and couches. X-Ray was full of life, laughing and waving his arms. Yo, caveman, my man, he called out. Stanley made his way across the room. Slide on over, squid, said X-Ray. Make room for the caveman. Stanley crashed on the couch. He had looked for a hidden camera in the shower. He hadn't seen anything, and he hoped the warden hadn't either. What's the matter? asked X-Ray. You guys tired or something? And he started to laugh. Hey, keep it down, will you? said Zigzag. I'm trying to watch TV. Stanley glanced uncertainly at Zigzag, who was staring very intently at a broken TV screen. The warden greeted the boys at breakfast the next morning and went with them to the holes. Four dug in the holes and three tended to the wheelbarrows. Glad you're here, X-Ray, she said. We need your sharp eyes. Stanley spent more time pushing the wheelbarrow than digging because he was a slow digger. He carted away the excess dirt and dumped it into the previously dug holes. He was careful not to dump any of it into the hole where the dull gold tube was actually found. He could still see the tube in his mind. It seemed so familiar, but he just couldn't place it. He thought maybe it was a lid to a fancy gold pen. KB could have been the initials of a famous author. If only famous authors he could think of, the only famous authors he could think of though were Charles Dickens, Shakespeare, and Mark Twain. But it didn't really look like the top of a pen. By lunchtime, the warden was beginning to lose her patience. She made them eat quickly so they could get back to work. If you can't get them to work any faster, she said to Mr. Sir, you're going to have to climb down there and dig with them. After that, everybody worked faster, especially when Mr. Sir was watching. Stanley practically ran when he pushed his wheelbarrow. Mr. Sir reminded them that they weren't Girl Scouts. They didn't quit digging until every other group had finished. Later, as Stanley sat sprawled across an understuffed chair, he tried to think of a way to tell the warden where the tube was really found without getting him or X-Ray into trouble. It didn't seem possible. He even thought about sneaking out at night and digging in that hole by himself. But the last thing he wanted to do after digging all day was to dig at night. Besides, the shovels were locked up, presumably so they couldn't use them as anything else. Mr. Pendansky entered the rec room. Stanley, he said, as he made his way to him. His name's Caveman, said X-Ray. Stanley, said Mr. Pendansky. My name's Caveman, said Stanley. Well, I have a letter here for someone named Stanley Yelnats. He turned over an envelope. Doesn't say Caveman anywhere. Oh, thanks, said Stanley, taking it. It was from his mother. Who is it from, Squid asked. Your mother? Stanley put it in a big pocket of his pants. Well, you're going to read it to us, asked Armpit. Give him some space, said X-Ray. If Caveman doesn't want to read it to us, he doesn't have to. Besides, it's probably from his girlfriend. Stanley just smiled. He read it later after the other boys had gone to dinner. Dear Stanley, it was wonderful to hear from you. Your letter made me feel like one of the other moms that can send their kids to summer camp. I know it's not the same, but I'm very proud of you for trying to make the best of a bad situation. Who knows? Maybe something good will come of it. Your father thinks he's close to a breakthrough on his sneaker project. I hope so. The landlord is threatening to evict us because of the smell. I feel sorry for the little old lady who lived in a shoe. It must have smelled awful. Love from the both of us. What's so funny? Zero asked. It startled him. He thought Zero had gone to dinner with the others. Well, nothing, just something my mom wrote. What'd she say? Zero asked. Well, nothing. Oh. Well, sorry, said Zero. Well, see, my dad is trying to invent a way to recycle old sneakers. So the apartment kind of smells bad because he's always cooking these old sneakers. So anyway, in the letter, my mom said she felt sorry for the little old lady who lived in a shoe. You know, because it must have smelled bad in there. Zero just stared blankly. Well, you know, the nursery rhyme? Zero said nothing. You've heard the nursery rhyme with the little old lady who lived in a shoe? No. Stanley was amazed. Uh, how does it go? Asked Zero. Did you not watch Sesame Street? Zero stared blankly. Stanley headed on to dinner. 
he would have felt pretty silly reciting nursery rhymes at Camp Green Lake.